Sunday afternoon, the Denver Broncos had the opportunity to get their third straight win, sweep the NFC East, and head into the bye week six and four. If only they could contain Jalen Hurts and outperform the Philadelphia Eagles. Unfortunately, Hurts had his way against the Broncos secondary. Philly's power running game got the best of Denver's defense, totaling 214 yards on the ground, while the Broncos often scored just one touchdown and five trips to the red zone. Here's a look back at Denver's week 10 loss to the Eagles. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Empower Field at Mile High as today the Denver Broncos play host to the Philadelphia Eagles. The Broncos coming off that huge road win last week in Dallas, and right in front of their bye week, really are looking for a much needed victory. They'd be six and four on the season going into the bye. Seven games left, five of those would be against AFC West opponents. So it's all right in front of the Broncos for certain. The Eagles come into the game having lost three of their last four with a record of three and six. Hurts loads it up, wants a home run ball, and it is caught in the end zone for a touchdown. Gosh, this is not the kind of start, obviously, the Broncos fans and we were hoping for after such a big game in Dallas. There's still plenty of time. Denver's running game starting to show some signs of life. Got a big left stiff arm from Melvin Gordon, who rode Slay all the way to the one yard line as he tried to get into the end zone. Second down and goal. Denver trying to climb back in this one. First minute and a half of the second quarter. He ended up to go straight ahead. He walks into the end zone. Touchdown, Denver. And he hops into the stands and celebrates with a few of the fans there. Hertz keeps it. He's going to be pulled down finally by a determined Jonathan Cooper. Albert O with the catch and a huge run. 64 yards. Hertz in trouble. The loss of two on the play. That was Malik Reed. Simmons, his fourth interception of the year. Fourth down and a yard. Bridgewater right to the line of scrimmage, hands it off. Gordon running straight ahead. The ball is free and has been picked up by the Eagles. Definitely not the result Broncos country expected, especially after such a dominant showing in Dallas the week before. Now we have Super Bowl 50 champion Ryan Harris, thanks to FanDuel, here to help us highlight a few of the positive plays that we hope to see the Broncos build off of when they return from the bye. So let's start in the second quarter. It's the Broncos' first touchdown of the day. Melvin Gordon right up the middle. Yeah, and let's talk about Dalton Reisner as well. He's going to be right on this side at the left guard position. Now you have to win on these two blocks. What's really cool about goal line runs is all these other plays in the huddle, they're like, you know, zero out scat to yip fap, 22 Dover, right? But all of a sudden you get to the goal line, they're like, goal line 18. So this is goal line 18. You have to win at these two blocks and then Dalton Reisner is gonna pull around and here's the key that makes this play. They say pull around and find work. Well, that means if you see any opposing uh, color of, a, of an opponent, you have to go in there and hit it. And that's exactly what Dalton Reisner does. He gets through, it's a not too clean, so he goes inside and bam, finds two players actually at the end of the day. Just a fantastic job by Dalton Reisner getting around and reading the offensive line. He knows he can't go outside here, so he goes inside that, those two blocks and that's what makes this play happen. And it was cool too, I had my kids here at the game and I said, hey, what's gonna happen here is the Broncos are gonna score a touchdown and then we're gonna head out. And that's exactly what happened. So not only did you get six points, but the Broncos made me look good as a dad. And congrats to Melvin Gordon. That was his 50th career touchdown and his fourth straight game with a score. But now as we fast forward to the third quarter, it is third and nine for the Philadelphia Eagles. Jalen Hurts, he's looking for Devonta Smith for a big play, but Pat Sertan comes up with an even bigger one. Yep, and Patrick Sertan's gonna be right here. And one of the things you may hear from time to time for defensive backs, know where your help is. Well, this is a cover two shell. You got two safeties way in the back here. So they're gonna kind of cover the half of the field if anything gets passed. What I love is that even though you have safeties over the top, you still want to cover this area right here. And what Patrick Sertan does as the play develops, you'll see he pushes the player to his help, but then gets depth. And then if he just doesn't miss time the jump, 
he comes away with an interception. But this is a heads up play by the young player. He pushes him into his help, get the, but then gets back and drops into that area and nearly picks the ball off. That's expertise right there, knowing where your help is, directing your opponent to that area, but then also covering underneath. This is a heads up play by Patrick Sertan. PS2 with an impressive play, especially given he was questionable heading into that game. But now let's go ahead and move along to the Eagles next drive in the third quarter. It's Jalen Hurts. He's looking for Watkins, but Justin Simmons, he comes up with his 20th career interception. An amazing play. You felt like the Broncos were turning things around to win it, but a couple of things are happening on this play. First, you got Justin Simmons. I think you're covering him right now. There you go. You're covering the defensive cover guy, uh, but also Shelby Harris right here does a fantastic job of doing what they call the rip, getting that arm underneath, but then extending it to create separation. He's going to force an early throw for Jalen Hurts, and it's going to go right into the arms of, yes, one Justin Simmons for his 20th interception. That's an incredible number for such a young player. And Justin Simmons really does an excellent job of diagnosing the two threats that are coming his way and choosing correctly by watching Jalen Hurts' eyes. So as this play develops, Shelby Harris is going to get that pressure, extending that arm, and that's going to force the early throw. And Justin Simmons picks it off. I thought he might go all the way here, Alexis, but a great time in the game to get a turnover, and that was one hand washing the other. The pass rush creating pressure that creates the interception on the back end. Justin Simmons absolutely on fire lately. That is his fourth interception this season and what, third in the last three weeks? Yeah, he had two against Washington. He's really playing at a high level. Unbelievable. Okay, now one play we really hope the Broncos can learn from as we look ahead. 12.09 left in this game. Jordan Howard, he rips off a huge 25-yard run and really the ground game was the Achilles heel for this Broncos defense all game long. Well, they're going to see this play Again, it's a basic play. It's one of the plays I loved as an offensive lineman. You're just going to get some zone reads out of the offensive line here. But one of the things that's happening on this play, first and foremost, you have a corner blitz coming. So Kyle Fuller's on the edge. That means that the defensive end and Kyle Fuller are going to kind of split responsibilities there. And that's where Howard's going to end up running. So that's part of it. You're in a tough defense. But then also, you cannot get hit by this guy coming back because this seal block is going to create that lane. A lot of different lines, but this is how this happens. Every single offense in the NFL has this play in their playbook. And if the Broncos don't learn to play it better against it or even check out of it if they see it, it's going to continue to be an Achilles heel. So as this play develops, you're going to see Malik Reed get eaten up. That wham block really opens up the sideline. You get a missed tackle there by Kareem Jackson. And at this point now, you're thinking the game is over. Watching it on TV, some of the fans started leaving at this point. So you had a chance until this play, and this was the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah, there's a lot of plays that the Broncos need to learn from in this loss to the Philadelphia Eagles. Thankfully, they have a bye week if they want to, you know, crack open the Microsoft Surface and yes. take a look at some of the film. Ryan, thank you so much for your time. Always. Appreciate it. Well, still to come here on Broncos Country Connected, Ryan Harris will join Lionel Bienvenu and Troy Rank in studio to dive deeper into Denver's disappointing loss to Philadelphia. But before we head to break, here are some of my favorite images from Sunday, snapped by team photographer Gabriel Christus. Welcome back to Broncos Country Connected. While the Denver Broncos are 500 heading into their bye week with their playoff hopes still very much alive, there's no doubt Sunday's loss to the Eagles curved the enthusiasm that had been building in Broncos Country over the past couple of weeks. Here's Ryan Harris, Troy Rank, and Lionel Bienvenu for more on what the Broncos need to learn from this loss in order to get back to playing inspiring football after the bye. Thanks, Alexis, and welcome to our Denver 7 segment brought to you by 1-800- Got junk. All right, as always, here with Broncos insider Troy Rank and Super Bowl 50 champion, former Broncos lineman Ryan Harris. Guys, the roller coaster season continues. So high after the Dallas game. Oh! <laughs> now so low after the loss of the Eagles. But here we stand. Broncos are 5-5 five and five into the bye week, Ryan. Only one game out of first place in the AFC West and only a half game out of the last wild card spot. So hope is not lost, but hope is certainly dim 
after what happened against Philadelphia. Well, you got to play up the positives. Javante Williams had a fantastic game. Albert Okwebunam, Okwebunam, nice. Okwebunam. I just had, say Albert O. Yeah, I yeah. mean, uh, we got to teach the broadcasters here who are doing the games, but this was a, there were enough positive things that happened. You get Justin Simmons with his third interception. So focus on the positive, especially with the bye week. You want to make sure guys believe in the opportunities they have, and there are a lot of divisional games to set your claim, including your first game back after the bye against Los Angeles. Yeah, Troy, two weeks between games with the bye week. What does Vic Fangio do now with his team and his coaches? He obviously did something right the week before the Dallas game, and then it all went wrong last Sunday. Well, it starts accountability with the coaching staff, making the players know that we've got to coach better. You want to make sure we're all on the same page. You can't take credit when you win as coaches and then blame players when you lose. I think they're on the right track there. Also, I would simplify things as well offensively. Find what you do best and your best players. So, you know, if a certain guy, you don't want him on fourth down or third down and long, you've got to take that out of the playbook right now. You've got seven games left, and it starts with an AFC West game to resurrect this season. You still have a chance. Yep. All right, Ryan, the bye week approach is obviously different when you win that game going into it and when you go into it like the Broncos are now. As a player, what did you do with the time off there in the bye week? Well, my first bye week, I went up the mountains. I went to Vail and went to the Vail Cascade area, learned a lot. I didn't know people skied on the mountain. <laughs> but one of the things that happens as a player in the game, you get to talk to your coaches. And especially after a loss, coaches are more willing to hear your ideas. The first thing that an offensive lineman should do on this Broncos team is tell the offensive coordinator to run the ball. They ran it 38 times last week and only 18 times this week. That can't happen when you've got two running backs averaging over five yards per carry. So conversations happen, but also get away from the game, get away from your coaches, change the routine so you can be refreshed coming back. All right, Troy, Vic Fangio said he's not considering a change in quarterbacks. Teddy Bridgewater is a starter when they come back to play the Chargers after the bye. Um, also, Teddy met the media, and he didn't run away from this. He took responsibility for not trying to make that tackle on the game-changing touchdown against Philly. Well, he had to. Now, listen, this was rare. Teddy's never talked to the media on a Monday after a game because he talked to he talked to us in post game. But Teddy had to come forward and say, listen, this is my fault. The effort wasn't there. He said he wasn't proud of the effort and that he was called out in the team meeting. Vic Fangio said he still supports him and that he's still his quarterback. Teammates stuck up for him as well in terms of they support him. But Teddy had to fall on the sword here, Lionel, because when he finally saw it on film, he realized it was not acceptable. Yeah, Ryan, um, he owned it. As Troy said, they watched it as a team. Uh, Teddy took responsibility. So is he still the respected leader of the team here on offense moving forward? Absolutely. Now, he's going to have to reestablish that. I mean, just think about it. If you're Teddy Bridgewater, you say, come on, guys, we've got to give better effort. There's going to be a couple guys going, really? You know, so he has to do something to show his guys that he is the leader to be counted on, that they should listen to him, to continue to listen to him. And he can do that in practice. That doesn't have to be in a game. So I expect Teddy Bridgewater to earn the respect of his teammates throughout this bye week and the following week of practice and get back on track. All right. Thanks, guys. Now, every week, Denver 7 sports anchor Nick Rothschild takes us behind the face mask, introducing us to the players, their personalities, their passions, what they're like off the field. This week, he sat down with tight end Eric Saubert. The guy does the dirty work, doesn't get a lot of attention, and he likes it that way. Eric loves the game, but his football career almost never happened. Number 82, Eric Saubert. During his entire high school football career at Hoffman Estates in Illinois, Eric Saubert won just one single game. How did you stay interested in football with all of that losing? That's a really great question. Um, That's what I'm here for. I love playing the game when it comes down to it. Um, I was not never allowed to play football before high school, so when I started playing, I just really fell in love with it. <laughs> The love of the game, a noble sentiment. The chance to play in college, a worthy temptation. But what drove Saubert from one win all the way to the NFL also keeps him in shape. I love to train, like staying fit and, and staying on top of that. And like going to work out with like my brothers or my friends is like a really big hobby of mine. Fitness became a lifestyle when he saw gains in the gym translate to the football field. In college, when you know you start to develop a little bit, I was a little bit of a late bloomer. You start to see the results and like see how they translate to the field, 
And that's a really cool feeling. Naturally, the perfect workout starts on the way into the gym. That's one of my favorite things actually, is like when you're driving to the gym, just like turning the music all the way up, drinking the pre-workout, you know, getting ready to go. Your face starts to itch. Uh -huh. <laughs> what kind of training do you like to do? Is it all football related or power lifting? Yeah, no, so I love power lifting, love Olympic lifting. Um, I, every now and then, we'll pick up like a, a YouTube workout. All right, least favorite exercise? <laughs> Probably like cardio, man. Anytime I'm doing cardio, you need it, but Man, this whole interview is going to make me sound like a huge meathead. <laughs> to be clear, there's more to this man than big muscles. I like to draw in my free time. I mean, it's kind of relaxing, like meditating almost. But his heart will always be clanging and banging. I am a little bit of a meathead, so it's fine. <laughs> Well, still to come here on Broncos Country Connected, learn how one player's family ties to the U.S. Armed Forces has inspired him both on and off the field as we take a look back to Sunday's Salute to Service game. Broncos Country Connected is presented by Carpet Mill Outlets. Bigger discounts, better selections. back to this final segment of Broncos Country Connected presented by Ford. Sunday afternoon was a special day at Empower Field as the Denver Broncos showed their gratitude for those who have and continue to serve our country so bravely on Military Appreciation Day. For Broncos pass rusher Bradley Chubb, the Broncos salute to service game hits close to home given a long lineage of military service that has not only inspired him as a football player but as a person. There are more than 20 million military veterans in the United States. During Salute to Service, USAA and the Broncos celebrate our generations of veterans by thanking the men and women who have served our great nation. At this time, we'd like to ask all current and former members of the military here today to please stand and be honored. Yeah, it's a, it's a real special environment. It's crazy when you see the, uh, all the service members lined up across and um, you're running out with uh, select service members or the flyover or um, just the national anthem means a lot more that day. It's just a real special moment. I'm glad we get a chance to experience it with them and they could come on the field and kind of feel that game day atmosphere and uh, pretty much intensify, honestly. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. I'm honoring my grandfather who passed away a couple years ago, a couple of my aunts and one of my uncles who all served in the military, all served in uh, different branches, so I'm honoring all those people as, as much as I can. So this is my grandfather, uh, Aaron Chubb Sr. This is the one that passed away a couple years ago. I got a lot of my beliefs, a lot of my core values from, uh, from him. Uh, really do appreciate everything he's done. Um, this is his daughter Lisa, my aunt, and this is uh, actually my uncle. This is my uncle Eric, and this is his wife, Kim, and uh, they both served as well. So um, growing up with the, the beliefs and the morals and the values that uh, my, my, my father instilled in me, I know he got that from his father, which is my grandfather who served, and um, he passed that on to his other sons, which uh, was my uncle who served as well, my aunt. So I just feel like just those morals and principles, they, they stick with you, and like having character, like knowing to do the right things when nobody's watching, and the discipline to carry out those things and I know sometimes days might get hard, days might get tough, but just the discipline to keep going forward, uh, the mental toughness to, to keep pushing forward and uh, I feel like I got all those from, from like I said, my father, my aunts, my uncle um, who all serve. So. Still in, in my career today, uh, the hard work and the discipline and putting my head down and having that mental toughness with a couple injuries I've been battling through. So um, I'm, I'm still putting those to the test now and I'm looking forward to coming out on the other side. Snap. And Patrick Mahomes is hit, and he will be sacked. And a great job there by Bradley Chubb. Chubb gets up and sprints past midfield and works his way to the Broncos' sideline with Malik Reed congratulating him. We wouldn't be able to do half the stuff we're doing if we didn't have a, a military fighting for our freedom, fighting for everything that we have here back in the state. So it just means more because they put their life on the line. We think we're doing hard stuff by going out there and playing football, but they actually put their lives on the line just so that we could wake up in the morning and smile and, and be with our families and, and not have a care in the world. So uh, that's why it means so much and that's why it's important to me. Well, that's all the time we have for Broncos Country Connected, but be sure to join us same time, same place next week for a special bi-week edition you won't want to miss. 
For all of us here at the Denver Broncos and Denver 7, thanks for watching. Broncos Country Connected is brought to you by Ford Trucks. Built better, built stronger, built Ford tough.